Awesome, so let's go. Ten weeks are over. Over <laughs> all the hard work has fin has finally laid into our live MVP being ready. So really excited to share with you you that we've learned our product. So one sec, we got the sharing. Awesome. Okay, final demo. Actually. So before we start, I'm going to show, show a little video stating our problem and our solution. There is a big problem that has been going unnoticed for decades. This is a gas flare. It is responsible for burning unwanted methane so it doesn't get released into the air. The problem is that when these gas flares get extinguished, this harmful methane gas can get spewed into the atmosphere. Methane is a greenhouse gas and is one of the leading causes of global warming. Ensuring that all flares remain lit would result in annual emission reductions in the United States equal to taking nearly 3 million cars off the road each year. Oil and gas companies need a cheap, easy to use flare monitoring system that can tell them when a flare is unlit. That's where we come in. Introducing Project Firestar. Using our artificial intelligence powered flare monitoring app is easy as one, two, three. One, install our Android APK. Two, enter in the phone numbers of all the people who work at the gas flaring plant. And three, make sure your phone points directly at the gas flare. And then boom, you're good to go. Every few seconds our app will take a picture and our robust AI model with a 98% accuracy will check to see if the flare is lit or unlit. If the flare is unlit, it'll send all the workers a notification that the flare has turned off. After receiving this notification, a worker can go and quickly relight the flare to ensure that none of this harmful methane gas is released into the atmosphere. So join us in making the world a safer place for generations to come. Fire start. Get your flare on. On our Firestar team, we have Asad, our product manager, Pallavi and Alan on our front end team, Kailani and me, Arhan, on our machine learning team. Huge thanks to Seth, our instructor, and everyone at AI Camp for giving us the guidance and the resources we need to build this app. And a huge special, special thank you to Olia at Frost Methane for giving us the opportunity to make the world a better place. Awesome. So now we're going to dive a little, little more into the inner workings of our app, our app and the learning. Guys, guys, we, we, need, we need to give this guy a round of applause because there's no way around it. We, we got it. We got it. We, we do, but we got to keep going. Too. We're on a tight timeline. We got to keep going. This is doing oh, this is amazing. Amazing. <laughs> this is seriously yeah. awesome stuff. Keep, keep going. <laughs> okay. So well, I'm going to hand it off to Asad here. Asad here. All right, so basically we are using um, various types of technologies. Um, mainly our, our programming language is uh, React.js. We were able to use Node Package Manager to get all the packages we need. We use Git for version control and iterations, Expo and Expo command line interface for basically building our app and hosting our app on a sort of IDE. And then RoboFlow helped us um, help store um our machine learning model and we were, we were we were able to make calls to RoboFlow. And last but not least, the most important of all, where we connected our app towards um an actual user was using Twilio. And um if you go to the next slide actually, we can see that we were able to implement Twilio's serverless API feature. And this is basically where we were able to make our own function call within Twilio's console, which is shown in the screenshot. And then we can go ahead in our app, just put, put a host endpoint where we simply just have to call the function. And then the function will take care of our um, secret data, like account SID and authentication info, so that we do not have to put these uh, secret and um, very sensitive types of data into our app. Rather, we can just call this function and it'll take care of. And yeah, now we'll be, uh, Heading on to the machine learning. Okay, so on the machine learning side, one of our best practices would be balancing the data set by adding more flare off images since we initially had more flare on pictures. 
And some of these flare offs were synthetic because it wasn't easy to find a lot of them on the internet. And we used it, um, we used DALI 2 to create these images. And it also helped us score a higher accuracy percentage of 98.2% for our validation data set. And so with the synthetic images, our model is also able to detect that a flare is off, even if there were other yellow or red pixels in the picture, like um, the sky is orange and we have the sun and some yellow structures. And now I'll pass it off to Arhant for our reflection on the machine learning. Yeah, so initially when we first entered, I had uh, personally personally been in EdCamp, so I did a bit of computer vision there, there with you live. But in Incubator, we started, we dove straight into PyTorch and learned how to create models from scratch. That didn't end up working so, so well, but we pushed through problems and got at least a model training with PyTorch and learned some stuff there. But then when we, after realizing that our, our accuracy is not that high, we switched to fine tuning a pre-trained model, the one that one that RoboFlow already. And we learned that, that that was the best way to get the greatest accuracy. And we started out with the low accuracy, our debt was not that great. And then uh, through the course of like a few weeks, we learned about the importance of balancing our data sets. We have equal flare on, flare ons, and offs. And we learned about the importance of augmenting images. So we have like different like camera qualities, qualities and brights, and that really also boosted our accuracy a lot. Looking ahead, the skills that we like gain from this camp are, are like priceless to like we uh, expand on our model, hopefully, like perform tests and continue increasing the accuracy of flare detection, but also just computer vision. Computer vision in general has some limited applications. We can use the skills we learned here to like make whatever we want. Absolutely amazing. So, so now I pass it on to the front end team. Right then. So the front end team got to learn a lot during this incubator as well. We got to experiment and develop our skills in React Native, and we learned a lot of basic concepts such as hooks and rendering. We also got to realize the importance of REST APIs and providing the major functionalities of automatic, I guess, sending messages to phone numbers, and also being able to use the model through REST APIs as well. Okay. And we'll go on to the next slide. And so now that we have this base foundation of our app, our future goals are to keep in touch with Olia so we can start using it for her company and possibly even other companies in the real world. And we also may keep working together after the incubator to add more features to our app, which will be explained by Pallavi. Yeah, so more things that we want to implement into our app, are like first integrating MMS so that we can send images of the unlit flare along with the message that says it's off. Uh, secondly, we also want to retrain our data set to also identify an incomplete combustion, which is also a big problem in a lot of oil and gas companies. And finally, uh, right now it's intended for an Android phone, but this can get really expensive. So we want to look into lower cost solutions such as Raspberry Pi. And then pass it on to Arhan. Awesome. And just finishing off, I just want to like point out a few of the key features that we're really proud of. So we have our, we have our camera kernel timer. So you just so you just are pointing at a flare and it'll continue taking pictures. And in case someone walks by, by it has a notion threshold. So only if it, only if it four consecutive flares like spaced five seconds in between, if it gets four four consecutive flare off, then only it'll send a, notif send a notification. It'll fix it and then it'll restart that loop. And we have contacts implemented, like we can, you can add contacts on a very, on a very nice page. Our model is hosted on RoboFlow and we have secure Twilio messaging as mentioned before. Overall, we're just really happy, really happy. We got to amazing experience and build this and build it. So a huge thank you to everyone at AI Camp and Seth. And that's it for our demo today. Yeah, and real quick, I, yeah, I just want to shout out this team. Like everyone has put in, putting in a ton of work over the past 10 weeks and it's been just just an absolute joy to work with y'all and actually build something that matters and learn a bunch of new skills and be able to implement something that has the potential to make changes in the real world. Like super, super cool that we're able to do that. So just nice job, everybody.